Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Oh wait a minute, I'm not on the bench. I'm in the front room here. I've got a package into the P.O. box. A uh, viewer, fan, supporter, whatever you want to call it, has sent me a gift. So let's see what this is. I already know what it is. Because they contacted me and mentioned that they were sending it in. So let's go ahead and pop the box open here and see what we have received. Oh, look at that. EEV blog. Look at that. It's the EEV blog 121GW meter, multimeter. And I guess I need to put batteries in it. So, wow, that's pretty cool. It includes some probe leads. I'm not sure if it's the one included with it, but pretty nice. Let's see if the thing works. I don't know why somebody would send me something that doesn't. But um, it says it works. Apparently you can, uh, I think you can update the firmware. It needs firmware updates. So let's uh, pop some batteries in it and do a couple quick measurements. Oh, look who came up here on the table here. It's the Snickers. Always oh, going to sniff it and see. Those California smells. Smell anything good in there, Snickers? I'm on my uh, point-and-shoot camera. I forgot to recharge the batteries on the other camera. So if the video seems different, that's the reason. Oh, anyway, be right back. Snickers likes the case, but I don't think you fit, Snickers. Okay, back on the bench, put some batteries in it. I have the rubber baby buggy bumper removed. It's about the same size as the Radio Shack meter. A lot heavier. Let's see what happens here. I guess that thing it flashed up was probably the uh, firmware so we got a low Z mode voltage has a millivolt range Hertz and I'm not going to go through everything here but seems to have a lot of functions light it's got a nice light there. Set up what that does. Guess I'll have to get a manual. I don't know what this stuff does. APO on, B off, LCD, adjust the LCD. See how you do that. The arrows? Hmm, I don't know. Doesn't do anything. Yep, a bunch of uh, settings, I guess, that can be adjusted. And it measures the ambient temperature, apparently. Ah, pretty neat. Okay, let's uh, do some basic tests. Now, this meter is designed to be fairly accurate. Well, higher precision than these cheaper meters, anyway. But, you know, I'm not into uh, high-precision electronics for what I do, so I'll just do some basic measurements, see how it works. Okay, I have channel 2 set up on the power supply, 
it's at 11.4 volts so I'll turn that on and I have this meter set up 11.41 42 whatever and that's what it's showing when it's turned on so let's see what this meter is going to say when I connect it across the outputs I'm going to remove these covers is there a little bit in the way when I'm trying to put it across the load there or the supply 11.40 so yeah it seems to be in line there let me adjust this supply for a different voltage and see what it does okay now we're at 310 millivolts according to the meter you know, we don't have a lot of accuracy. It's going to round up probably. It says 303 on this meter. And we'll see what this meter has to say. Now even if for some reason this meter wasn't accurate, as long as it's in the ballpark for what I do, it agrees pretty much with the cheapo meter. I should put that in the shot. Okay, let's go up to like one, one or two volts. Let's do two and a half volts. I tell you what, I'm going to pause the video and just put alligator clips on here so I don't have to keep manually touch the leads to the wires here. Okay, I got that taken care of. Power supply says 2.50 volts. And these are in pretty tight agreement with one another. There's 5 volts. Pretty good. There's 20 volts. 32 volts. That's as high as my supply goes. And uh, I'm not going to measure any more voltages. That's good enough. Okay, I'm... Measuring current here, so I adjust the meter or the power supply current rating or current level to half or uh, 50 milliamps. The meters are in series in current mode and they're both pretty close 39 milliamps. Power supply is not real accurate apparently there this should be saying four should be rounding to four or 40 milliamps they have a higher precision version of the supply which of course for what I do I do not need I wasn't going to pay the extra 150 bucks or whatever it was for that but anyway I'll crank this up now first of all let me take it out of precision adjust mode so now we're at 200 milliamps and oh, we went over limit here I guess I have to move to another socket here there we go don't want to blow anything up yeah it's pretty close these are off I'm not sure which one would be more accurate though but probably this one would be 300 milliamps and that's one amp on the supply and yeah they're close enough for me okay I'll take some resistance measurements with these 1% metal film resistors It's uh, 20, it's supposed to be 22K, I believe. Yeah. Try another one. Twenty-one point nine something. Yeah, that's pretty close. I'll try these resistors as well. I'm not sure what these are. These are tiny. Hard to read.
that's uh, supposed to be 220 ohms, apparently. Try another one there. A little bit laggy on the measurement. 21.8. Yeah, it seems to be doing the business. I'm going to run a few more tests. I won't bore you with doing a bunch of tests. Now here's a feature I really like. In diode check mode, a lot of meters have a limit of around 3 volts that they put out for checking the diode junction. But this has a 15 volt mode here. See right now it's in 3, I hit this, it goes to 15 volts. So I can use it to check these little cob LEDs. And the, the camera's kind of grainy because I have the, oops, it may look kind of grainy because I have the lights off. So let me uh, check this cob right here. Look at that. It's measuring at 7.667 volts. That is cool. That's very handy. Okay, put the lights back on. So I ran through a bunch of checks. Everything seems okay except for capacitance modes. I don't know what the limits are. I really need to find a manual, but I was checking some capacitors in the picofarad range, like 100 picofarads, and they're measuring pretty low, and this meter measures them pretty much on. Another weird thing I was having, it won't measure this capacitor for some reason. This meter measures it correctly at 49. It's supposed to be 47. But this one, it just puts a dot up and it you know, blinks off and on and doesn't ever give me a reading. Uh, some other capacitors I checked seem to work okay. So I'm not sure. Maybe this is leaky or something. I don't know. I, or maybe there's something with the meter. So all in all, it's a pretty nice meter. I have to see if I can update the firmware. Maybe that'll take care of some of the issues I've had. But I want to really give a big shout out to Steve for sending this to me. He said he had it and didn't really want it, so he sent it to me. So wow, I really do appreciate that. You know, I don't know what these things cost new. I mean, this one is used. But, you know, as long as it works, certainly nice to have a better meter on the bench. So that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching.